How is him going with a competitor that would cost her money breaking point? She made that video. She chose to publish that. She's perfect, holier than thou attitude. Hey guys, so I don't mind my hat. Um, I got it today. I feel witchy vibes, so I feel like wearing it. <laughs> Today's video, I am going to be talking about Tati's return to YouTube. If you haven't seen my previous video, it was made before everyone was made aware of the fact that James Charles is pretty predatory towards underage kids. Similar to Keemstar holding up Jeffrey as if he's, you know, redeemable now for everything he's done, I don't think that Tati's necessarily redeemable either. Hello, sweetie, are you okay? I'm not sure if that's picking up on the microphone. Hey, little man, now are you? Oh, you found your toy. Oh, you good boy. I just want to cover some of the points why I'm not necessarily going to just drop everything and support Tati straight away. And I'm going to go through a lot of the points that she said in her video. He's really spanned by this toy now. What bothers me is that this wasn't the first time that Tati went after another YouTuber. The first time was Kiki Chanel. Again, I've gone through all of this in my previous video, so I'll make sure to link that below. Just a quick synopsis, was she was a less, I believe, than 200,000 subscribers. Tati was around 4.5 million. Kiki Chanel saw Tati's video bashing the Emily Noel Makeup Revolution palettes. So she did a fence video. Basically what this video is, it's an emergency review. Kind of in defense of, so this is the Emily Edit palette, this is the, the Wants palette and the Needs palette. Kiki Chanel is quite um, the point. <laughs> like she swears and stuff like I do. Apparently after that video, Tati was getting a lot of hate, she was getting a lot of like ageism kind of comments, and none of that is okay. That video went up is when everything tilted and when comments got really nasty. These comments came from such a toxic place that I disabled. However, targeting Kiki off the back of all this was just, it was just crazy to me because even Kiki said that before Kiki had even posted her video, there was a shitload of dislikes on Tati's video. There were 6,000 dislikes on your video. It doesn't matter if you have 10 followers, it doesn't matter if you have 5 million. Everybody gets hate comments. So to turn around and say that Kiki's the reason that she got a shitload of hate when it was likely just due to the fact that she was shitting on the palettes that a lot of people actually did like. Any video where you're being negative about something someone else likes, you'll end up probably getting hate, let's be honest. I'm not saying that any of the comments Tati got were okay, I'm saying the way Tati dealt with it wasn't okay. To put all of that on a channel of 200, less than 200,000 subscribers was just gross. She also, again, makes out that she's like, holier than thou, better than everyone else because she doesn't swear in her videos. Um, there was profanity in the video, like that's how riled up this person got, um, which I don't use on my channel. So the mommies out there that are watching don't have to worry about me dropping an F-bomb and I keep my comment section as clean as possible too. And it's very like, she was better than Kiki, so how dare Kiki speak poorly of her, even though Kiki's well within her right to have an opinion. Tati's within her right to not like the palettes, but just because someone way tinier corner of the internet turns around and says, I really like these palettes, it was really gross. And it, it always turned me off the way Tati dealt with that situation. I always, I literally stopped watching her for a while because I thought, dude, she's got this fucking high horse attitude recently that I just don't like. It turns out she was very similar with Jeffree Star, wasn't she? Because she thought that she could be this sort of role model to Jeffree Star. I knew that Jeffree had had a lot of drama in his past. I thought I could be a good example for him. Even though Jeffree Star's like, I don't know, three, four years younger than her, like, and she thought that she could be a good influence on him because she's so fucking perfect, right? If she had just turned around and said, look, I fucked up, I shouldn't have done this, or whatever, I would have had more respect for her, but she didn't. She tried to victimize herself. She tried to blame everyone else and say that, you know, I was fed all of these lies. I'm so sorry that I allowed myself to be poisoned and weaponized against you. I should have known better than to fall for their lies and manipulation. And now that it's turned around almost in her favor, we don't know if this was happening beforehand, but we definitely know that this is happening now. Nobody 
I don't believe. Nobody has come forward from the time when she made Bye Sister. We don't know if any of the allegations she made within that video were actually worthwhile. Also, her turning around in the Breaking My Silence video and saying that the sugar bear hair thing was just the breaking point. James Charles's sugar bear hair sponsorship and all of the drama that had kicked up afterwards, that was just my breaking point. Actually is really gross to me because if she had known apparently about this predatory behavior James was having, why was that not the breaking point? I was him going with a competitor that would cost her money breaking point. I think that says a lot more about her. I would have had more respect for her if she had turned around and said that her breaking point was when she found out that he was inappropriately sexting minors. But it wasn't, it was, a sh it was, it was sugar bear hair. Last thing before I get on to my notes. She didn't actually provide any evidence for, for any of the accusations that she made during Bi Sister, even to this date and therefore we are just expected still to take her word for everything that happened even though she twisted things in her favour for instance the I can do anything because I'm famous whatever quote which she had participated in previously This is an inside joke between my friends and I that Tati has also participated in She turned around and said that James was flirting with a straight in her opinion waiter when actually Sam, the actual waiter, did, turned around and said that he was by curious. James Charles asked to kiss me, and I was very nervous because I had never done anything with a guy, and I was by curious, so I said yes. It's very frustrating when straight people just automatically just assume everyone's fucking straight. In 2021, can we please stop fucking just assuming everyone's straight? Appreciate it. Before Tati released her video, she didn't post any of those cryptic little videos like she did the previous time with the Breaking My Silence video. She just said that there's gonna be a new video in 30 minutes. I do wonder if she genuinely had planned to come back and it was just a coincidence that literally, what was it, the day before, Jeffree Star had put up a video that he was basically leaving the beauty community because as far as he was concerned, there wasn't a beauty community anymore. So I do wonder if she was like, do you know what? Now he's leaving, this is my time. Or if she had planned that, like literally a week before, it's hard to know. I did tweet like, really? Everyone seems to be coming out of the woodworks. Gabby started dropping her Trisha videos to prove that they were friends. Everyone has different standards for friendship. Jeffrey come out of the woodwork and has dropped this video. Um, even David Dobrik, there's like murmurings that he's coming back. Um, please don't. You got your millions, fuck off. Before I even get into this, like, I'm not saying Tati shouldn't come back to YouTube. I'm just saying that I am not going to fully, 100% trust her and support her the second she comes back, considering everything that has happened previously. The fact that she tries to literally m manipulate the narrative. I know D'Angelo Wallace took down his video because in some of it, it does sound like he's supporting James Charles and considering you don't want to have a video like that and I've even considered removing my tatty video but I also want to show the timeline of events I don't want to just it's like one of those kind of hard decisions you have to make as a youtuber as things change and people were thinking exactly the same with Trisha and I saw Pastel Bell say the similar thing with Trisha but at the same time I kind of want to show how things have changed over the years I will trust her with makeup reviews she's a fantastic makeup reviewer and if you don't trust tatty my new tatty um, is on Instagram, Rose and Ben. I think she's incredible. She's so lovely, like such a beautiful person. I don't think she's the same age. I think she might be a similar age to me, but I don't know. She's absolutely lovely. She does wear tests on almost everything she uh, reviews. She even tried out the, you know, that Il Maquillage foundation that everyone gets recommended on their fucking Instagram feed. Like if she stays out of the fucking drama and out of controversy, and doesn't shit on small channels, I'll think about it. So firstly, her video was not 40 minutes long, which was a huge fucking sigh of relief. I'm sorry, but we are all sick of the 40 minute bullshit videos. I mean, there was even a, wasn't there a meme around it at one point? It was nice that this was like an 18, 19 minute video. So the first thing I noticed was she looks a lot healthier. She looks happier. 
prior to her breaking my silence video, which I forgot to mention she has removed. I mentioned that she had been trying to get pregnant but due to the fact that her she was so stressed out with everything that was happening. I think there was a lot going on in her personal life. She was physically not particularly well. She was, I think she said she was underweight. I was so upset that I continued to lose weight. I couldn't sleep. And slowly I became a shell of my former self. I had intended on pursuing fertility treatments in 2019, but my mind and body were just too frail. My mind and body were just too frail to support a pregnancy. I remember on her Instagram stories when I used to follow her, she used to show quite a lot of her exercise routines. It always made me want to take my physical health more seriously. It did inspire me in that way. So I will say, I'm not saying she looked fat or anything. I'm just saying she looked healthier. She looked like she was glowing. Um, and a lot of people mentioned that. The previous video, was she, she, was, she was covering so much the bi sister thing that's probably stressing her out. That video, about 50 million views or something before, before she privated it. It was covered by so many media outlets. In retrospect, it's fucking crazy because she didn't show any evidence. It was simply just due to the fact that she had a good reputation prior to that video. When you really, really, really think about it, that's what's crazy. That everyone ran with this narrative. I ran with that narrative. That's why I'm not automatically trusting people anymore. Because people lie. People twist everything to make themselves look better. The same thing I said with the whole Jessie Gabby thing. You will always have this person's point of view, this person's point of view, and the truth. In general that, because every single person will automatically see it from their point of view and their narrative. For instance, with the Swoop Mikey situation, Swoop showed evidence throughout over an hour long video proving that Mikey said and did things that were just really gross. Like she was like homophobic to James and to Jeffrey because they were at the top of the beauty community and she wasn't. She made every single situation about herself rather than actually listening when her friend was in like a really bad place. When someone is showing receipt after receipt after receipt in an hour long video, that is what I would expect a media media outlet to run with. Just one person's word of it. It's just, I actually can't believe in 2021, we were all that naive. And this is the thing, just please don't get this twisted. I am not saying that I in any way support James Charles. I've made a whole video on the fact that I think what he did with minors, what he did using his power to manipulate other people, all of that was absolutely revolting. I'm not saying I fucking stand by him at all. He can fuck off and never come back to YouTube. Same with Mini Lad. Go over there to the island of we don't want you here. <laughs> she mentioned that her Breaking My Silence video was very successful very successful last video is amazing which i find weird like i don't know if she genuinely meant that because if she did i find that strange considering everything that's happened since and in that video she said that her and james have forgiven each other that they were in contact blah 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 i have a feeling she was being sarcastic i mean i'm british we have the driest sense of humor but she had shitloads of dislikes on it she had a lot of comments in there that were really bad she said that the event seems to follow her everywhere she goes so that past event that seems to want to follow me everywhere i go i don't want to talk about I she's the one that made that video even if she says that shane and jeffrey manipulated her yeah maybe they did but she has to take responsibility. This is what frustrated the fuck out of me with that breaking my silence video, is the fact that she took no responsibility for the fact that she made that video. She chose to publish that. And therefore, if she gets backlash from any of the choices she's fucking made, she has to live with that. Either live with it or apologize for it and grow from it. But you can't just turn around and be like, do you know what? None of this is my fault. Because it's that's not the case. She said that she's had no communications whatsoever from the beauty community. I stopped communication with everyone in the beauty community. I haven't talked to anyone in over a year. I find that hard to believe. Before her breaking my silence video, she says that her and James have forgiven each other. He even offered to come to the, her LA home, be with her when she was filming that breaking my silence video. You're telling me 
the one person in the world that could maybe understand her point of view or circumstance if she was manipulated and all this kind of stuff from Shane as she says she hasn't been in contact with them at all for a year because last year at least in most of 2020 right everyone's opinion of James James Charles not her husband they were supportive of him I'm not saying that they would have been in constant contact I find it hard to believe that they wouldn't have had a single text message here or there for instance when maybe he found out about the lawsuit which was without a crystal ball and with Clark Swanson and etc she hasn't spoken to anybody one of the videos I rewatched last year was Rach Loves and Tati Westbrook's collaboration because Rach is a pretty genuine uh, youtuber that she hasn't spoken to anyone at all unless she literally just means James Charles, Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson not that Shane Dawson was ever really part of the beauty community let's be honest at the moment she said there's no lawsuits I believe something like that there's no litigation no cease and desist nothing either way in that uh, event if you will legal things happened just not in the I don't want to talk about it event Right? Most people are running with the fact that they think this is around the without a crystal ball. Tati said something along the lines of the without a crystal ball went way too far. Like, without a crystal ball was looking into Tati's husband and was trying to get... If I remember rightly, it was when her husband was a, a lot younger, like a teenager or something. The court documents were sealed. I can't even remember what it was. And to be honest, I'm not even going to look into it because if it was sealed, without a crystal ball had no reason to try and dig this dirt up on Tati's husband. Like, that was just gross. Like, Without a Crystal Ball also went after Tati's family, trying to get information on them and, and dirt on them, etc. Didn't she send Without a Crystal Ball a cease and assist? I'm so happy to announce that, I, that a settlement has been reached as to all of the claims between myself and Tati and James Westbrook. Something I also remember, again, from the Breaking My Silence video was the fact that Patty turned around and said that what Jeffrey said in the Mum's Basement podcast was in with Shane in his apology video. She thought it was cowardly and defamatory. In early May, when Jeffrey went on a podcast and denied responsibility for his involvement and placed blame on me, it was both cowardly and defamatory. You ruined James Charles' career. No, Tati did and uploaded a 40-minute video about him, and she should have never uploaded that. Last week, when Shane issued his statements about his involvement in all of this, I also perceived them as cowardly and defamatory. I was just going to ignore it. And then when I started hearing, oh, Shane mastermind the whole thing, it didn't sit well with me because it's not true. Within the statute of limitations, if she wants to proceed with any sort of case or whatever. As for everyone else involved that did anything underhanded or defamatory over the last year, I am still well within the statute of limitations for bringing a civil action to seek recovery for my damages. Should I proceed with this course of actions? My attorneys will be deposing all witnesses who have information about the truth of what happened here. She semi-threatened them in that video. So for everyone else whose hands are dirty, that have not yet come forward, be careful of your allegiance. You don't want to be on the wrong side of the truth. I kind of take this as with all three, without a crystal ball, Shane and Jeffrey, I don't think anything else is going on behind the scenes, or at least from her word, which like I mentioned, it's hard to believe these days, but okay. She's the only person talking about it. So I guess I have to believe it. They could turn around and say that she's sent a cease and assist and if they've got the evidence for it I have no reason not to believe it. Tessie then says that she doesn't want anything to do with the drama channels or she even mentioned that she knows that drama channels will likely pick this up and talk about it. I think she was gonna say she was gonna ask no one to talk about it which I think is a lot to ask. Well I'm asking, I'm not asking for people to not talk I know you're gonna do what you're gonna do. Have your opinion, I'm a tough chick. I mean, even Jeffrey hasn't asked anyone to not talk about his, him selling his home, etc. So for her to come back to YouTube and to ask no one to talk about it, I think would have been a bit rich. She did say that she doesn't want 
any of the spiritual channels to talk about her or to read her future. When it comes to things like psychics, mediums, tarot readers, I have closed that door in the spiritual realm and I am asking to not be used in any way, shape or form in videos involving divination. Please do not. I didn't even know this was a thing on YouTube. I know everything's a thing on YouTube. I mean, naked yoga's a thing on YouTube. Do me a favor, don't search for it. It's exactly what you think it is, don't search for it. I guarantee every single person has just clicked off of this video to search for that and he's gonna comment below. I warned you. Like, she was either in, more involved in the more spiritual side of YouTube and found these videos around her. And it's something that I am not involved in anymore. I was heavily, but I have shut that down. She did mention about that when people make these videos now, they're so aware of their body language. And then you have to think about the body language channels, which is like a whole nother thing. Because of the body language, the face reading, the channels now, like, like observe, like I, it is quite insightful. It does tell you what you wouldn't normally read or wouldn't realize why you're reading the situation the way you are that maybe you don't believe what that person says and that's due to the fact that their body language is telling you something so going back to uh lawsuits she did mention that she is currently in a lawsuit with clark swanson who was the ex ceo i believe of halo beauty is that I am still currently actively today going through litigation. My business partner in Halo Beauty, Clark Swanson, back in October filed a lawsuit for $30 million. She did say she's never left Halo Beauty. I have never left Halo. I have always stayed active as the CEO. Clark Swanson is suing her for $30 million, which is a lot of money. And I'm not necessarily saying she's lying about that, but again, she didn't show any proof that it was $30 million. So again, we have to just take her word for the fact that it's 30 million. Okay. I'm sorry, I just, I have to take what she says with a grain of salt because she still shows no evidence of anything she says. She could be doing that just to paint the narrative that this guy's really, really shitty and trying to sue her for $30 million, even though there's a lot around the clock, Swanson subject. He apparently was feeding drama channels what was coming up for Halo Beauty and for Tassie Beauty, like what she was going to end up releasing next, which, you know, is privileged information. I was recently informed that Clark Swanson had been feeding information, disparaging information to drama channels about myself, about my husband, my family, info about Halo Beauty, financials, pipeline of product launches, the kind of stuff that should never be shared under any circumstance. As long as he had some sort of NDA, I would have expected, considering both Patty and her husband James seem to be quite savvy business people i would have expected that they would have had some sort of something legal within their documentation and they hire someone so that you can't talk about like, stuff like that so if that was never in the ceo's agreement when he joined halo beauty i find that really odd if it was then he's just doing things that are illegal she can get him for that the thing that i find really really strange about this whole lawsuit the whole clark swanson thing there is a clause in the contract and said that whatever Tati does, it has to be under the Halo Beauty tag so that no matter what happens, he would get some of the kickback from the sales, basically. Brooks would commit to use Halo Beauty as Miss Westbrook's umbrella brand for all her beauty launches. Cosmetics, skincare, fragrance, all of Tati Westbrook's beauty products. For Halo Beauty becoming Miss Westbrook's exclusive channel for all things beauty. Mr. Snowson agreed to give up his 50% stake and managing membership in the nutraceuticals business in exchange for one-third of the ownership of the all-new, all-inclusive brand. And then all of a sudden she created Tatty Beauty. So Clark Swanson never got any of the money from any of the profit from the eyeshadow palette or the makeup sponge puff things. But what was really dodgy to me, and if anyone can explain it to me, great, awesome, thanks. <laughs> but to me, I don't understand why Tatty 
and her husband liquidate a shitload of their stock of Halo Beauty if they're not guilty of something. Uh, October 9th, 2020, defendant James Westbrook distributed hundreds of thousands of dollars to the members of Halo Beauty Partners LLC, including substantial sums for his own benefit. The distribution was wrongful because it was made without the authorization of all of the member managers as required by the party's agreements and practice. This is why I will not automatically just back Tatty, just support Tatty. She's not answering any of these questions. It'd just be because Tatty's still going through this whole lawsuit. She's had to downsize because of it. We sold our house in LA. I moved out of my condo. I have downsized my life in a major way. I also question, is it just because the lawsuit that she's downsized? Or is it also due to the fact that she's been off YouTube for well over a year? Technically, she's not making any money. I guarantee sales for Halo Beauty and Tatty Beauty are going to be a lot lower than they would have been if you were creating new products. Excitement for new launches and stuff is there, or you'll be like, oh, you know, I'm still using my Tatty Beauty palette, which, by the way, I'm not. <laughs> I haven't used it for ages. I used it for one Christmas look. I've used it, like, maybe once a year since I got it. Like, I also question the fact that she's now got, like, a small studio. Tatty and her husband... Um, they separated for a while. During this very, very stressful time in my life, James and I almost got divorced. We could not be around each other. He got his own place. We were separated during the holidays. Uh, it was a sad time. Like They were almost to the point of having a divorce and I'm not like completely heartless. This is what frustrates me. When people say that, you know, I'm, I don't know, shitting on Jeffrey because I don't agree with their past behaviors. I am not heartless. Jeffrey going through losing animals. Just being so open and candid, I lost, you guys know I lost two dogs in 19. Completely sympathize. If you've seen my video around, what were they even called? The people that put down their dog. Don't care to remember their names, obviously. I broke down multiple times in that video talking about my animals that have passed away. Completely sympathize when someone loses an animal. Jeffrey also spoken about the fact that um, him and Nathan broke up. Nathan, to him, was the love of his life and therefore being in that big house alone is lonely. And I lost the love of my life. The one person that I've truly been in love with is not in my life anymore. And those things, however they seem to someone else, were so devastating to me personally. And I, again, I completely sympathize I have been in and out of relationships for the past two and a half years and I have been single for like almost 10 months which is the longest I've been single since I was like 15, 16 years old. I completely understand. I have felt so lonely and I've mentioned about it on my Twitter multiple times that I've never felt so lonely in my whole life. The fact that I was at my absolute happiest, basically this time last year, who I thought was the love of my life. And how do you find happiness after that? And obviously during a pandemic, it's like just, it's even fucking worse. It's really difficult. So I completely sympathise with that. And I sympathise with the fact that Tati has, due to all of the stress and strain that everything has put onto her and James's relationship, that they were at breaking point. That... Honestly, it's so sad. I mentioned this in my Tatty video. I used to love watching her and her husband. The videos of him picking her makeup were some of my favorite videos on her channel. They seem like such a lovely couple. So to find out that they almost broke up is really sad. I'm glad that, you know, they've been able to reconcile and, and get through it. I can truly empathize with these people's situations. It doesn't mean I have to forgive them for previous behavior though. So one of the things that was that Tati was having to deal with a lot of harassment. I was getting the most intense harassment. I'm talking death threats that were explicit in detail. People saying they were going to hunt me down. They knew where I was. I was getting emails. Some of the most disturbing of me being monitored in the privacy of my own home through technology, through my smart TV. Like straight away, putting it out there, harassment is never okay, ever. But please, for the love of God, do not even think that I would ever not empathize with something like this. Tati mentioned the fact that her privacy was being invaded. And there were things that were happening that were so appalling. 
And when you feel violated of your privacy, like you're being spied on and you're blackmailed and then people are harassing you in this really graphic nature and you're getting a barrage of detailed death threats, let me tell you, you'll lose sleep. She had a smart TV and basically she was being blackmailed on the fact that she didn't pay something or do something or whatever. Being blackmailed if I didn't pay up, they were gonna put that all over the internet. The blackmailer, to be clear, this is alleged because again, there's no evidence around this. I don't think anyone would make this up. I'm inclined to believe this, but again, I, you know, I do have a, a slight grain of salt with this because it is just her word. If this is true, it's, it's, it's horrible, like, genuinely horrible. The smart TV was hacked. Her and her husband were, I assume, filmed doing, let's just say, adult things. And she was threatened that go on, I think she said something along the lines of the most popular adult website, which I can only imagine is Pornhub. I was getting accounts made with my name and horrific graphic adult acts um, in the title, like the screen name from the most popular uh, adult site online. It's their home. Two consenting adults can do whatever they want in their home. They can have sex in the living room, or the kitchen, or the bathroom, or their bedroom. Your house, you do whatever you want. No judgement. So that is very, very scary that someone has hacked Tati's smart TV to get this blackmail of something that should be private in your home where you should feel safe. Super, 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 super gross. She mentioned the fact that she had kind of found God and again and that everything happens for a reason. Would have made it through everything without God's grace. I had so many spiritual encounters and the power of prayer is a beautiful thing and I've appreciated all of your prayers. About the fact that she lost her wedding ring, she's pretty sure it got donated by accident. I was moving out of the Bellevue condo I had put a bag of jewelry together to take and then another one to donate. I think we can see where this story is going. So I hadn't been wearing my ring, it was with some other jewelry, and I believe, unless by a miracle I find it pop up, but I've looked everywhere, that it got donated. So if you have my wedding ring, well, blessings. I don't know what more to say. She would rather have her husband back than have something material. But I also have had a huge awakening this past year that material items are not the most important thing. But I have my husband back and that's better. We have our relationship, our marriage back. And that actually is a miracle. It's a miracle. That's more important to her. And I, you know, I completely get that. If she comes back and just starts reviewing makeup, and doesn't have a she's perfect, holier than thou attitude. If Tati sticks to makeup, doesn't get involved in any drama. I'll be inclined to start supporting her again, but it's hard. I mean, I, I don't think that Tati is anywhere near as bad as Jeffrey or as Shane, but I do think she abused her power in the way that she tried to manipulate them. I will say I miss her sisters, her twin sisters. I loved them on her channel. I thought they were, they didn't have the same attitude that she did recently. In some ways, I don't know what to think. I know that I can't just automatically forgive her and believe her because we've been burned before. That's why I find this crazy that people were just automatically forgiving her for everything. Just, I can't, as someone who supported her for like six to seven years, just forget that she did that. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give this a like and subscribe if you like it. I would really, really appreciate it. If you want to make sure that you see my video, make sure to also hit the notification bell. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye!